All right, let's talk about stick. Okay, uh, we're gonna use the Bonawi baton, which is a European uh, collapsible baton, super great baton, a little bit pricey. Um, there's a detent in the bottom, which lets you close it without having to slam the tip repeatedly on the ground like the ASP. Um, alternatively, a 21 inch air weight ASP is a great tool. Um, this is the air weight Bonawi. Um, shout out to Bonawi. They have a instructional DVD that's actually really, really good. Unlike the ASP products, that have a very simplistic three strike program. Uh, the Bonawi program, they actually explore FMA. They use a lot of uh, Filipino martial arts in it. They use a lot of closed baton techniques, similar to my collapsible baton um, video that I did with Paladin, which will be coming out on uh, on Prime here, you know, as soon as we get it unfucked. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the baton. Ways to carry the baton. I mean, there's a le the legality thing, right? Obviously. Uh, my understanding in, in our state is that if you carry the baton in a way where there's enough visible that a police officer would have a reasonable expectation to understand that it was a weapon, then it's legal. The minute you cover it, it's illegal. So in other words, if I put this in my back pocket and this much of the baton is sticking out of my back pocket in plain view uh, and not covered, then it would be legal. But if I carry it in my groin line, here and then I cover it with my shirt, it's illegal. So again, those are personal judgments that you all have to make. We're not, we're not promoting anything uh, illegal or anything like that, but we obviously know that everyone has to make their own personal decisions. Um, we prefer bludgeons to knives because of a lot of different reasons, right? The blunt trauma impact is usually immediately apparent when you hit somebody with it. Um, please don't fucking flood me with a bunch of police officers hitting people that are like clothed in, in winter clothes and striking badly with no power behind them uh, and saying, look, this didn't do anything uh, to this guy. That's true with any weapon, right? If you use a knife, uh, like I did in our knife video, there's times where people have been stabbed, you know, 30 times and they're still fully ambulatory. That's true with any weapon. You can shoot people multiple times and they're still ambulatory. Nothing's a panacea, which is why we always say that you should always have unarmed skills, right? You should absolutely have unarmed skills. But interestingly, our observation is that people tend towards tools. They want tools, right? Tools, in a lot of ways, psychologically, remove people from the responsibility to have to do it themselves. In other words, unarmed. It's the gun, or it's the knife, or it's the stick, or it's the gas, or it's the whatever it is, you know? You, you, you are always personal, personally responsible for, if everything fails, you still have to take care of business. Now, our combatives principle number one is what? Go armed. It'd be stupid not to be armed, okay? Because being armed is a significant advantage, but nothing, again, is a panacea. Anyway, 21 inch uh, is much better than the 26 inch or 28 inch uh, rattan sticks or anything like that, primarily because it doesn't give as much um, pressure or uh, over rotation into the joints. So when you have a really long weapon, that creates a lot of inertia, a lot of momentum, and it's, it's hard on your wrists and on your elbows and all that stuff. So we prefer the 21 inch ass baton. Um, to, to open the baton, uh, we don't suggest the downward opening. I mean, in a lot of police systems, most police systems, they teach to open down, which if you think about it, with the baton open like this, I really can't do anything with it, right? I mean, there's no way to strike. The exception to that is when you're looking for a stealthy opening. In other words, if I want to open it and put it behind my leg and not basically have people see it, um, that would be a reason to do it, uh, but uh, like the only reason, right? Other than that, it'd be much smarter to do what we do, which is open it up. If you open it up, then it's immediately available to come down, all right, to swing down. Um, you can open into the passive guard. So as I open the baton, I'm basically opening it and I'm just kind of resting, talking to somebody. From here, I can punch straight ahead. So in other words, if someone came running at me or if I was speaking to someone at this distance, I can just hit right here, right into the face. Okay, I don't even have to show any tip movement or any kind of uh, uh, large movement that would be a, uh, an ability for him to see a strike coming, okay? Um, the guard position, okay, is here, obviously our passive guard. The active guard is just a little bit more aggressive, right? It comes up like this where I can use my arm to shield my face and I can obviously 
bounce the weapon off my collarbone to get both a double-handed power strike where both hands are involved and also the leverage coming off my collarbone because we're always talking about what? Tip velocity, right? That's where the majority of power is gonna be generated for this weapon, all right? The grip, you wanna have the grip not at the base, and a lot of police weapons have a flared base so it doesn't come out of your hand, but that's not where you should grip it. You should grip it with about an inch, an inch and a half out so that you can use that part of the weapon to grab arms. Uh, imagine, for example, if someone's got their arms up and I don't wanna hit him, but I wanna pull that guard down, I can use that to pull his arm down, to hook his arm down. All right, you can also use it to strike. So again, the grip obviously is right here. The angles with the weapon are gonna mimic the same angles, slashing angles, as we use uh, for the knife, which is straight FMA kind of philosophy, right? So angle number one, I'm here, angle number one is straight down, right? So it comes straight down. And when it comes straight down, it can be on any target. And we're not gonna get into the use of force uh, color coding, you know, like the head's off limits. The head shouldn't be off limits, all right? You can, we believe in a non-duty um, situation or even in a police duty situation where a higher level of force is warranted. Just because you hit somebody in the head with this doesn't necessarily mean you're going to kill them. It's like anything, right? Like kicking to the groin in a lot of jurisdictions is considered illegal because it could be lethal force. It's lethal force if you continue to stomp a guy's fucking nutsack, right? But if you kick him once in the balls and he falls down, that wouldn't be lethal force. So yeah, if I hit you in the head with this, okay, multiple times, it's very high likelihood I'm gonna crack your skull or cave your head in, fracture your skull and, and, and could be a lethal injury. Don't do that, right? But the downward angle, our number one, could be clavicle, it could be shoulder, it could be arm. If I take an angle and hit like this because a guy's reaching and I hit like this, that's a number one, right? So it's 12 to six, just the same as it is with the knife uh, slashing. Angle number two, same as knife, 45 degree angle down. So that 45 degree angle down, to use Wittick, right, where I'm hitting and retracting instead of pulling through, I'm just hitting and pulling back, hitting and pulling back, hitting and pulling back. And what am I hitting? Same things, right? Wrist, forearm, ulna, elbow, shoulder, collarbone, side of the neck, vagus nerve, all that stuff, side of the head if necessary, outside of the knee, hip bone, 45 degree angle. The reverse of that is number three, right? So you've got number one straight down, you've got number two, and then you've got number three, right? So let's say I swing a number two, the guy pulls back or I miss, and then I step forward, boom, and I come back on the reverse angle, that would be our number three, 45 degree angle. And then simply number four, same thing, up, swinging up and in, number five, coming back this way, number six is a, post, uh, a poke. And that thrust is never gonna be one-handed, okay? It's always gonna be, kind of structured where your hands over the weapon and you're stepping in. What am I doing with my feet? Like the knife, I kind of want to lead with my strong side, okay? I want to use my lead foot to guide the weapon. I want to lead with this. I don't want to protect the baton with my body. I want the baton to protect my body. It would make sense, right? So again, if I come over here to Bob, I'm looking at number one, in his face. Number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six, okay? And that can be any kind of thrust, right? So it could be a Farabaran boom like this. It could be a bayonet thrust. It could be a, a supported thrust like this, okay? Um, now, I'll, just like with the knife, you can use this baton the same way. So for instance, um, you might remember from the knife video, you saw me move my hands like that, which is, we're gonna do another video today on stabbing angles. That's a stabbing angle, right, where I come up. Well, the stick is the same way. If I've got the stick and I'm talking to somebody, this, right, coming up into the neck, this is an old Fairbairn classic. Uh, John Styers used to use uh, similar kinds of strikes. So just thinking in angles, right, the same thing that you do with your hands, you could do with the stick in a rowing kind of motion. All right, so quick review, one straight down, two, three is the reverse, four, five, and boom, straight in, okay? Um, again, practice them both with the weak foot forward and the strong foot forward, same, same kind of motion, right? Boom, boom, through, here, 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 and then boom, okay? To make sure that as you fight dynamic situation, both sides will likely be forward at some time, okay? So it's not, it's unlike boxing where 
you know, if you're right-handed, you're gonna stay right-handed. In combatives and the combative use of both the knife and the stick, it's highly likely that sometimes your lead foot is gonna be forward. Sometimes if you back up, your strong side will be back. Sometimes you'll step forward. It all depends on what you're trying to achieve. Okay, so that's a little basic blurb on the use of the stick. We'll do more. Okay, we'll do some more uh, recovery strikes and some of the other strikes that we use with this. Maybe some closed stick uh, applications when we can bring someone in here uh, and break this dreaded fucking six foot rule and all that shit. But I uh, hope you appreciated that and uh, we'll see you soon.